you know the nandi vahana that is always found in shiva temples it's always there there is a nandi looking at the shivalinga it has a certain uh, deep sadhana resonances or sadhana instructions or qualities more than the obvious mythological that this is a bull that shiva rides around on you know all our devtas have a vahana they have a, a vehicle but a vahana is not how the devta moves the vahana means the manner or system or method in which the shakti or the teaching or the kshetram associated with the devta flows into you it's a very 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 uh, mythologically and esoteric uh, complex occult uh, complexity wala situation hai each vahana represents a certain vibration each vahana represents a, a certain manner in which the shakti flows for instance skanda kartikeya kumara subramanya whatever murugan whatever you want to call him his vahana is very unique peacock you know so there is a certain flamboyant manner in which the shakti flows there is a certain manner of exuberance and joy and dancing and generally peacocking you know that it is it is inevitable but since those are not qualities which are very spiritual later on they began adding other symbols to you know they have a rooster as a banner they have a very peculiar kind of square flag as a banner so in south india you can actually buy all these various emblems of murga you can buy the whale you can buy that square flag you can buy the rooster because each one of those symbols represents a certain quality and a certain aspect of the shakti that is in murga and how you can access it and shakti that is in skanda and how you can access it the muruga of course skanda muruga subramanya is uh, he is the master of the pranava he is the master of the om he is the master of the vibration of the om so it's a very deep level sadhana only you can get if you master that then all other aspects of life are integrated therefore people worship him for all their worldly joys and success and you know success in life success in marriage success in it's a very complex thing but the fact is that they had a mail vahanam they actually had a, a peacock vahanam and then they had to add other symbols because the peacock vahana the way the shakti flows is very difficult similarly durga who is completely the most astyor rupam you know the most forbidding and most remote rupam the vahanam is lion you know because that indicates the certain quality of the shakti that will flow toward you and the fact that it can just bite you and finish you so when you look at the vahanam there is also a certain encoded uh, communication from the yogis this is the path this is the kind of interaction that you will have now this does not matter to most people because most people will never get that you know when people tell me that they had vision of durga and all that i just look and smile you know because <laughs> if you actually saw durga <laughs> that was just your overheated imagination in most cases or people saying that they had darshana parishurama if you have a darshana parishurama you can't stay in the world anymore vairagya becomes so intense you will leave instantly so so shiva's vahana is very interesting because it is the bull you know and the bull is always you know we say it is the vehicle of the gods i have never heard anything so stupid because if you look at the way the vahanams are placed it's always looking at it's in the very very rare temple that you will find that it's it's always like you know parked in front of the gate and it's looking at the devta it is not it is not ready to move out 
So to say that it is the vehicle of the gods is actually completely inappropriate. Vahanam is how the process or the channel, it is actually a channel within certain parameters how the Shakti flows towards. And if you are really, really advanced in yoga, just by looking at the vahana, you will know the qualities of the shakti, you will know the kind of uh, sadhanas that are associated with it, you will know the kind of rituals that will be, the puja vidhi that will be associated with it, just by looking at the vahana. And also, you know, in the Jain Tirthankara, since the Tirthankaras are all males, nude males standing erect, shave heads, they are immobile because they believe that if you even move little bit, you are back into the field of karma. How do you associate which Tirthankara it is? So Mahavira always has a lion at the base. Parashnath always has a cobra over his head. Again, that indicates that Mahavira was, lion is a symbol of the sun, it is a symbol of intellect. It indicates that Mahavira was a great intellectual. It indicates that Parishnath was a great master of the Kundalini. So there are multiple, even over there, because you know Hinduism and Jainism, I know all the Hindu types are going to jump on me, but Jainism is actually older than Hinduism. It's a separate, independent, unique religion. We inter, we interlock at many places in terms of yantras, in terms of mantras, in terms of creating sadhanas, we interlock a lot. Socially and culturally, we have become indistinguishable. Because, you know, vegetarianism, celibacy, those kind of things, those are all Jain traditions. They are not Vedic or Upanishadic traditions. So they also have this whole notion of Vahanams communicating something. But I would prefer to talk on uh, Nandi, the Shiva's Vahanam, because we are at least... You know, anybody looks at me knows <laughs> what the deal is. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a Shaiva path. It's a, so what does the what does the Vahanam of Shiva? What does Nandi symbolize, and why do they put the Nandi in front of the temple? What are we supposed to learn when we when we see the Nandi? What is it communicating to us when we visit a Shiva Shetram? When we visit a Shiva Devalaya? Now. Many people know that you are supposed to look through the horns. Yeah? Some temples they actually advise you look through the horns of the Shivalinga. There are reasons why, but those are all the specific nitty gritties. Let's get into the, the meta thing of what Nandi represents. Nandi is not doing anything. That is the most important thing. In fact, none of the Vahanams are in any sense doing anything. They are all just sit. They are just sitting in absolute receptivity. They are just sitting in absolute stillness and completely open to the Shakti that is flowing from the Devta, from the Murti, from the Shetra. You don't need to, Nandi in fact is regarded as a rishi in his own right. He is regarded as a great master of meditation because this is the commonest error that people have. People think that meditation is something that you do. It is a useful error because you have to practice that error for a long time before you realize that it's not something you do, it's just a quality that you become. You become meditative. And Nandi, just by sitting still and letting, letting the Shakti flow, because Nandi is not asking anything. Most people make that other error also. When we go to a temple, we go with a list of our demands. God, these are the... <laughs> <laughs> These are the current issues I am grappling with. Kindly, <laughs> for your kind attention, please, <laughs> please deal with them when able and <laughs> please respond as soon as possible. <laughs> you know? I am not saying that's wrong, by the way. If you are traumatized by the events of life, it is perfectly okay to ask uh, 
shakti to fix those events so that then you can get on to the main event but as i keep saying sadhana doesn't make you enlightened sadhana only makes you the kind of person who can become enlightened that's what nandi is doing he just become the kind of person who get enlightened he is now completely open to grace he is now completely open to the kshetram completely open to the shakti he is not doing anything he is not waiting for anything okay maybe he is waiting to be liberated we can give that much we can give that much concession you know in our affirmations we have this very very in our smaranas in the eight spiritual breath smaranas we have this extremely powerful remembrance extremely powerful smarana i keep saying all of yoga is in that all of yoga is in that i wait i listen i look within i am still and that's exactly what the nandi is doing in fact all vahanas but more than any other case since shiva is the ultimate yogi all vahanas that is exactly what is happening is waiting listening looking within being still when you are no longer seeking you find when you are no longer asking you can listen when you are no longer telling please do this for me please do this for me please do this for me that time the kshetram can do what is genuinely and really required for you and it can give you the optimal thing instead of what you are asking with your so the way that nandi sits because you know i don't know if you actually have seen a bull sit most of the time they don't sit they are walking around very slowly or they are standing or they are you know picking up stuff and eating it but if it sits then it's near impossible to get it up again you know when a bull sits it's settling in for the long haul it <laughs> it has decided i am comfortable here there are things i need to process and i am going to do it and after that the traffic can be all around and people can poke it and so in a sense so what happens when you hit samadhi that is nandi that just sitting that i am going to sit here and i am not going to budge because whatever the process is playing out within me the shakti has activated something within me and it is going to take some time and i am just going to sit till it is done even the buddha when he finally had enough of striving he just sat under the tree and he said either i will die here or i will wake up with the cure for suffering i am not going to budge that's all he needed to do that's all any of us needed to do but you have to be that prachand you have to have that level of intensity where it is a truth and not a very big applause creating dialogue you know so when nandi sits he has just recognized that this is the source consciousness and there is nothing more i need to do i just need to sit here and that is the core of darshan why do we go to a temple why do we go to an enlightened master because if we just sit without asking without questioning without 25 different issues and expectations and limitations of what should be and what should not be if we just sit there and we just be receptive what flows from there will be much more powerful than anything you can imagine very often the person out there doesn't know what's happening because the person is not really speaking the personality is not it is the the flow of shiva it is the flow of the devta it is the flow of the kshetram that is giving the darshan it's not the limited person you know when i am holding everybody in sannidhi at that moment it is not me it is flowing through me which is why i am keep making the distinction between rohit and sipo Rohit is the personality, and Sifu is not. Which is not to say that Sifu is Shiva. That is also the other blunder. But the quality of Shiva at that moment flows through. Nobody should ever get into that arrogance of thinking I am Shiva. No. Whatever Shiva is, I am. Yes. 
is not I am Shiva. There is a distinction. There is a difference. You share the qualities, but you're not you're not that you're not that level. So just by I wait, I listen, I look within, I am still. In those four phrases, you have all the sadhana methodology that you can require, all the meditation methodology that you can require. In the early days, listening means going to pravachan, going to reading the books, garnering knowledge. I look within. This is what people most don't do. They, they can be patient and they can... But they won't do any kind of introspection. Atma vichara, that is I look within. They start introspecting within, what is going on within. I am in this process, what is happening, what are the transformations. I have heard my Guru Santosh always ask, so how is it changing your life? What is the impact on your life? And she's actually created a questionnaire because people are not able to figure out how their life. <laughs> so how has practicing the breath changed your life? I said, good, we'll make it mandatory for everybody. <laughs> you know, again, this becomes one of those frustrating things and this becomes one of those things that people find it very hard to believe. You mean, if I go to a temple, I don't need to do anything? I just need to be in the Kshetra? Yes. Then why does it not happen to me? Because you are not vibrationally that intense to get what the Kshetram can give you. You need to do the sadhana, you need to do the japa or the puja or the meditation or the kriya, whatever sadhana you are doing, just to raise yourself to the level where you can access it. This paradoxical simplicity is what defeats people. Because if you give them very difficult things to do, then they feel, you know, because the, the human mind is always very grateful for activity. You know, people confuse activity for attaining something. You know, they confuse action with actual attainment, which is... But the fact is, the way Nandi sits... Now, you know, from, from region to region, the Nandi varies. Now in Maharashtra, it is very common that one leg is up like that with the hoof up and, you know, and even what they put. Somewhere in Madhya Pradesh, close to Nagpur, but actually it's in Madhya Pradesh, there is a Shiva Lingam, which that, it's a Spatika Lingam, a white crystal Lingam, which the yogi has put at the exact spiritual center of India, not the geographical center of India. And there is a Nandi over there, which is the strangest Nandi I have ever seen. Because on the hump, there is actually an uncoiled snake, there is a kundalini. So very clearly, what parampara, what kriya, what kind of process, everything. And just like Sri Kalahasti, there are those nine bands in copper holding the, holding the Navagrahas in place. So it's very, if you have that much knowledge or you have that much insight, you immediately understand. But that... The other reason why they selected Nandi as the Vahana is because bulls are basically uncontrollable. You know, when a bull goes berserk, that's it. The whole marketplace is cleaned immediately. You know, because it's, it's fundamentally as a symbol for the human mind, as a symbol for the animal nature, as a symbol for everything that is limited and not functioning from a higher consciousness, the bull is a perfect example. Because, you know, the way it puts its head down, paws the ground, snorts and then charges. I don't know if anybody has seen it, maybe in movies or maybe in cartoons, but you have to see it in real life. Then you understand, this is exactly what happens when a person becomes derailed. <laughs> the, the, all the rational faculties are gone, all the self-control is gone, all the filters are gone. And there is just this savagery left. And if you do not therefore align yourself to Shiva, which is auspicious consciousness or higher consciousness or source consciousness, the chances are that you will erupt one day like that. And the looking through the horns of the bull is you bring your 
you bring all your faculties you bring your mind body emotion everything into focus concentration so it's a way it's like a gathering lens or something so it brings it to you it's not compulsory that you have to look through the horn but it's just a way of telling you be focused in your vision be focused in your gaze but the point of darshan is just that now many people will do only darshan now you see if you do only darshan you will get very little from a darshan you will get only trickles you can get waterfalls you can get torrential downpours of shakti but for that you need to be doing a sadhana you need to be doing some kind of serious process because the serious process expands your capacity to receive your container expands and what nandi is doing is he has done all the sadhana and now he is just i sit i listen i look within i am still he has completely understood that the last point is grace that the last influx is not within my control i cannot will it i cannot make it happen because it is my desire i can only burn up all my karma and be ready at the moment it happens because that is the other frustrating thing many people exhaust their karma and the moment comes and they are like oh something is going wrong with me i need to take medication which is okay because the vasna samskara has been created they'll get a chance again but you know too many times you miss your avsaram there is problem but a nandi vahana you know at least the nandi vahana can carry people you know i mean how do you expect a peacock to carry somebody or a mouse to carry somebody you know at least a nandi vahana in logical terms makes but it's not logical no it's it's a symbolic language of communication it's not meant that shiva actually wander is around on a bull that is a that's a completely ridiculous we are understanding it so whenever you look at a vahana kali of course doesn't usually have a vahana but when it is there it is a tiger so uh, motor <laughs> you know, that saraswati and brahma have the swan as the vahana you know because it's a certain nature it's a certain quality of the the spirituality and the knowledge and the shakti that will flow into you so the vahana very clearly in symbolic terms now you will ask so why can't they say it now that question i do not know you know it's like asking why didn't the egyptians invent writing why did they go to the trouble of having hieroglyphics you know it's the way certain things happen it's the way certain things manifest now they wanted to they wanted to create a system the minute they created rupams the minute they created murtis they realized that if we say everything straight out it will be problematic so they created these encoded manners of communication they created these peculiar ways of communicating that only when you come to a certain intensity of sadhana only when you come to a certain level of consciousness you can decode what is the next step what is the next step if you are really good at this you can walk into any temple and you can instantly make out what kinds of sadhana are conducive here what kinds of sadhana have been done here what were the qualities of the yogis who came and meditated here what is nowadays of course nobody comes and meditates in temple because you know it's all puja all the time what is the nature of the puja that was done here and it is revealed to anybody who comes to that vibration it is revealed no i am not getting into the mythological stories about nandi and all that because that is another ball game altogether those are teaching tales so the stories involving nandi is normally not a major character he was a supporting actor you know but those are different the teaching tales are very different the way in which you use the kathas to transform consciousness is very different from the symbolic the rupa you know so the nandi the nandi rupam also very often inside the nandi they would they would put herbs and stuff 
they would put certain transforming things that is the rasayana shastra the alchemical knowledge of the yogis inside the nandis they would normally fill it up with a lot of stuff and that would have an impact on the kshetram that would create a certain vibrational field very often what we think are granite rock nandis are actually not they are just stuff that has been filled up and then on top of that they put this lepa lepa is a paste that they make and that paste when it hardens it hardens like rock so when you do that it feels like rock sometimes harder than granite but very often the nandis are hollow there is stuff inside them just recently jaggi did that in the nandi in the asia foundation it's uh, full of these things so but very traditional yogic thing it's a very typical yogic thing that is an added benefit you see from the the people will be coming they will be sitting and meditating so when they are meditating in the kshetram they have used a force multiplier there the nandi becomes a force multiplier now in um, vishnu temples very often you will find a very odd vahana you will find a tortoise you know a tortoise is a big thing in yoga you know because a tortoise is a symbol of evolution of consciousness it can breathe in water it can breathe on land it is the life leaving that unconscious which is represented by the water and coming into the stage of consciousness which is represented by the land there are multiple reasons why there is a tortoise and those tortoises usually also have stuff done to them either with mantra or with substances or things like that now this knowledge is unfortunately done this knowledge of how to energize the vahana so that it enhances the power of the kshetram is unfortunately done and people don't care anymore that is the other problem people don't meditate in temples that is the biggest problem i really wish that every temple would have a rule that for one hour in the day there will be no pujas there will be no darshans people will just come and sit there will just be meditation going on some people still do they understand that the kshetra has to be sat in you know you just sit like nandi but like i said people don't go to the temple to sit no people don't go to the temple to be open people don't go to the temple to be receptive they go with the shopping list they go with the list of demands they go with the list of complaints me too i am not <laughs> i am not avoiding myself any halos and angel wings over that but at least i know how to sit i know how to sit in the kshetram and i don't even need to sit i go through the main dwara and uh, under the first gopuram and i can feel the the power of the kshetram the nandi is a very unique form because of all these overladen symbolism and all these other things that they would do with it you know and to some extent the nandi is the only vahana that is actually functioning as a vahana shuddhi because if you look at most of the other vahana they are all recent additions you know durga temples never used to exist because durga used to be so abstract it's only very recently that durga temples have started coming up and the the lion vahana is pretty sad there you know and they have the mouse vahana in some of the ganpati temples it's just there because everybody is imitating the shiva temple but in the shiva temple it was done because the nandi had to be in a perfect ratio if the lingam is a certain size then the nandi has to be in a ratio to that either smaller or larger so it is a very complex business it had to be created in a certain way so that whatever is flowing through the lingam then comes into the nandi and then it flows out into the rest of the it was not an easy game it was not an easy game it's not like you have a you have a shiva lingam at home so you just go and buy a nandi how nice you know <laughs> no the ratio has to be perfect even the materials used in the if it's a nataraja or if it's a dakshinamurti or if it's a shiva whatever it's a lingam what is the height of the lingam what kind of lingam is it all that determines the kind of anandi even over there with all these rules in place 
people got arrogant and ego on these you know they started building these <laughs> gigantic man you know mountainous you know like three four elephant elephants piled on those temples you can see there are no kshetras over there there is no power in those temples because they broke the rule they broke the rule about the size of the nandi i wish i wish sometimes that i was a more karma kanda ritualistic guy you know because i love these things and i understand them that my path is more into the siddha you know, the, the body is there whatever you can lose is not yours whatever can be taken away from you is not yours that is our path it is my destiny to be on this path but that doesn't mean i don't appreciate <laughs> those other paths and it doesn't mean that i cannot when i see an authentic nandi i cannot understand what an awesome thing has been created over there you know? so that notion of just being open to shakti that notion of just sitting with determination determination for what not for a goal list not for a checklist i am sitting and i am taking in the shakti let it take me somewhere just that determined to be receptive capable of being receptive no you may be very determined but you have nothing you have no no ability to absorb and that ability is infinite you know there is no point at which you can say i am done there is nothing more that can because consciousness is much vaster and greater than you ever will be the ability is infinite but just to sit i wait i listen i look within i am still just to do that much is not possible for people people get and i realize that yeah it's not possible for people precisely because they have not become more intense the minute your vibration becomes more intense you become you don't become so skittery anymore you know people who are nervous and skittering and jittering all the time they don't have intense vibration prachand jab vibration hota hai to aadmi apne aap shant hota hai the person automatically comes down like nandi it doesn't mean that like nandi you cannot erupt one day and you know clear out the whole marketplace in two seconds <laughs> but generally that sense of increasing calmness and increasing strength these are the two things because if you are doing a kundalini yoga path if you are doing a genuine kriya yoga path strength will increase you know it is one of the great compliments in sanskrit to call somebody a bull you know arjuna is always called bull of the bharata you know <laughs> the bharata race ka bull hai wo even today they call you know that uh, utkala sanda you know the bull of the kalinga you know? <laughs> but this is what it means you see when you look at a vahana there is a whole yogic symbolism associated with it and it's a fascinating study in itself the vahana is sometimes way more fascinating than what the vahanas are meant to do and what they are supposed to teach you are sometimes way more fascinating than the murti of the devta <laughs> it's quite an astonishing thing but uh, that's basically what the at a at a meditative kundalini path the nandi is probably the supreme uh, symbol of the sadhaka of the person practicing the nandi is in that way the, the supreme meditator so i wait i listen i look within i am still that's it you don't need me anymore <laughs> all the knowledge has been given brahmastra has <laughs> and of course nandi is the devotee but then i don't think anybody gets anywhere in yoga without bhakti you know? without little bit of devotion without little bit of sharnagati because there is nothing greater Nandi Sharnagati is so great that he will actually carry Shiva on his back if need be. Nandi is a gana, no? He is one of Shiva's assistants. When we say he became Shiva's vahana, it meant he had become so aligned with Shiva that he could transmit the energy. The energy could flow through him because most people couldn't get Shiva. Shiva is so intense. Nandi is the step down transformer. You know, he can bring the <laughs> he can bring the shakti into a 
a manner that people can comprehend and grasp and receive. But uh, I don't know, I, I sometimes feel very disheartened at how dissociated we have become from our culture. But that, that is not helpful. Whatever we can rescue, we should rescue. Whatever we can bring back, we should bring back. But certainly if you have shivalingams at home, please don't go running and buying a nandi because you saw it in a shop somewhere. Yeah? It's not so simple as you think. Or putting a vahana for any devta. It's not so simple as you think. It's a much more complex. But nandi is the sadhaka. Nandi is the, the spiritual aspirant. Nandi is the not just the spiritual aspirant, he is the person who has come to the point of now he is a rishi. Just by connecting to the source, he has now made it. So in that sense, that is what all Vahanas are supposed to be. Like I said, there are complexities. But Nandi is no doubt. For me, uh, from a yogic perspective, Nandi is the supreme Vahana. Nandi is the most insightful and meaningful Vahana for those in sadhana, for those in practice. Yes? Enough for today. <laughs> Sarvam Shivamayam.